Hey guys, so this video is very important. What you're going to hear in this video is not new information. It might be new to you, and if it is, that's even better. But we're taking more of a trip down memory lane, and you might be wondering why we're doing this. We're doing this because we live in a world where information is dumped down the memory hole very quickly, very easily, and very often. And I want to make sure that I at least somewhat teach people to not ever forget the past because it matters a lot. You see, we look at the world now and people genuinely believe, because they've been brainwashed to believe, that all black people are victims, all white people are attackers, and basically all that kind of stuff, right? Not just that, but things of that nature. And the reason is because the past is constantly forgotten about. Whether if people's brains have actually been brainwashed to forget old information, I mean, that would actually explain why every single time a horrible story comes out, people act as if that story is shocking or brand new, because they seem to forget about a similar story that may have happened just a few months ago or the year before. And the other reason is because of big tech censorship. Because a lot of you may not know this, but it is true that certain information or specific news stories are very often removed off of Google search results and things like that, or at the very least buried so that when you type it in, like let's say you remembered a terrible story from five years ago, you wanted to search it up today, and it might still be there, but you'd have to scroll down like many, many, many pages to find it, even if you typed in the exact title of the article. And of course, many articles are removed completely off of the Google search results, and also many that are, even if they're still there, the wording in the article has been changed and edited. This is incredibly common. And the tactics, like the reason why they do this, is because they want to do everything in their power to make you forget about what truly goes on in the world. This has happened many, hundreds of thousands of times online. And because we live in a digital world where things are not printed and can be easily edited, they do it more often than ever and have no worries about people finding out about it because very few people actually do find out about it. And hell, even if, pe even if people, let's say five years ago, made videos on these topics, a lot of people get banned left and right and videos deleted. So no matter what, anything you make or is made online in general can be dumped down the memory hole within seconds. It's not like the days where we had newspapers and as long as you kept the newspaper, you can find any story. Not the world we live in anymore. But what I want to show you are three examples of some of the worst, let's say, worst crimes I could think of where the media manipulated the story to make the victim look bad and the attackers look good just because the attackers were black and the victim was white. There are hundreds of stories like this because... <laughs> I mean, that's the world we live in. I've, or I myself have made tons of videos where the, where the media has blatantly lied about a story because they wanted to make a black attacker look good and a white victim look bad because that's the world we live in. That's our SJW culture. They want to flip reality to make you believe in whatever horse shit they want to pull, uh, shove down your throat. You know, the big dick of lie. But yeah, I want to take it down memory hole in case you forgot of the three worst examples of this happening. The first one I'm going to show you is the story about Tony Timpa. I already made a video on Tony Timpa quite a long time ago, but I'm going to tell you about it again, okay? Tony Timpa was a man who was having a schizophrenic episode and hadn't taken his medication. He was held down by police and basically strangled to death because he couldn't breathe properly. And you might think, oh, well, he was probably being aggressive and resisting arrest. No, he actually wasn't. I would suggest, by the way, if you that you read this article on what happened to him. And even because the actual body cam footage of Tony Timpa's death is literally released. I'm not going to show it here because I'm trying to get through this video. But I was just looking it up if you have any doubts about what I'm saying. So... Basically, he was killed in almost the exact same way as George Floyd. The only differences between George Floyd and Tony Timpa are the following. 1. George Floyd was held on the ground for 9 minutes. Tony Timpa was held on the ground for 14 minutes. 5 minutes longer. 2. The cops 
were laughing at Tony Tempa. They weren't laughing at George Floyd. Three, Tony Tempa did not get any media coverage whatsoever except for a few articles here and there like this one. And keep in mind, this article was released in 2021, proving that even though there was stuff written about him, it was written much later, and there is very little of it. Four, unlike George Floyd, the cops did not get any consequences whatsoever, and unlike George Floyd, Tony Timpa did not get any riots, any protests, any statues to honor to honor what a great person he was, and no public funeral. And the final difference between George Floyd and Tony Tempa <clears throat> is that Tony Tempa was white. And for those of you who are very just not intelligent, the reason why Tony Tempa didn't get media coverage or a big public funeral or a statue and all that other shit that George Floyd got is because he's white and the mainstream media and people in general don't give a fuck about white people I've been saying it over and over and over again dumb people will deny it but it is a fact white people do not matter we are constantly thrown across as the attackers meanwhile we're the victims more often than not and the media doesn't care about us, and nobody fucking riots, all because we have white skin, while they simultaneously say that white people are the racist, meanwhile, the reason why Tony Tampa didn't get any media attention is because he's white, and that is fucking racist. What a shock. So that is the first example of media not covering something because of just SJW racism bullshit. Example number two is something that I actually made a video about a long time ago, back in 2016. I have deleted the video, but I included a clip from the video in my recent compilation here. First, I'll show you the clip, and then we'll talk about the actual story. And then, and then there's the media. Typical media fucking bullshit. Don Lemon actually said this. But what's the motive here? Oh man, jeez. What was the motive? You know what? I'm stumped. I just, I, I can't figure out what the motive was. Please. Can someone help me? I mean, I just, I can't. Figure it out. I can't. I can't. I can't figure out what the motive. What could the motive possibly have been for four black people to beat up a white guy? I mean, what did the white guy do to deserve to be beaten up? I, mean, I just. I can't figure it out. I mean, this is. This is fucking. We need Sherlock Holmes on this shit. I can't figure it out. In other words, fuck the fucking media. This makes me sick. You want to know why? Because of one simple fucking reason. If this exact same thing happened, exact same thing, for one of these two reasons, or both combined, if it was either a Trump supporter attacking a Hillary supporter, or if it was any white guy attacking a black guy, the media would have been like, oh, disgusting white people at it again, always attacking black people. And you know what? I was right about it then, and I'm even actually more right about it today. So here's what the story actually was. This was after uh, Trump had won, and there was all those protests going on about from uh, Hillary supporters and Trump supporters. And what happened was there was four black guys who beat up a disabled white Trump supporter just because he supported Trump. And you can literally hear them in the clip there going, fuck white people, fuck Donald Trump. And I even showed Don Lemon, that idiot, saying, what's the motive here? I love how if the skin color was reversed, we would know exactly what the motive is, eh, Don? You'd be saying, oh, well, the motive is because the victim is black and th those white people are racist and because they either support or don't support Trump or Hillary. But because the victim is white, it's, oh, what's, what's the motive? I, I, I can't figure it out! 
And then, of course, I mocked him by showing the black guys literally saying, fuck white people, fuck Donald Trump, which is literally their motive while Don Lemon plays dumb. And that's not it. I mean, I'm showing you the, me the bad media coverage, but it actually gets worse. In this video, again, I don't have the full thing anymore, but I mentioned how CBS literally manipulated the story to make it sound as if it was for white guys attacking a black guy. And I actually found the exact audio from the CBS broadcast where they spoke about it. Listen to it. The viral video of a beating and knife attack in Chicago suggests the assault had racial overtones. First things first, we're gonna, you know, I, I wanna go through this one step at a time. The first thing is, you know, and if you don't know this, you're really stupid and need to get educated, that if it was four white guys on a black guy, the first thing that he would have said is, a terrible attack from four white people beating up a black person. But because it was black guys attacking a white person, they just say, oh, there was an attack and it had racial undertones. We're not gonna say which race because we're not allowed to because it's not part of our narrative, but there was racism. People watching CBS don't actually look into it to see what the racial undertones were. Just take our word for it. Gets worse, by the way. CBS's Dean Reynolds tells us the victim is described as a mentally challenged teenager. A mentally challenged teenager. Again, they, they leave out the skin color because it's not black. Uh, he's in the video, he is choked and repeatedly called the N-word. Now, the funny thing is, listen to that level of manipulation. Now, them saying he's repeatedly called the N-word is actually true. I know it doesn't make sense. It was the four black guys calling the white guy the N-word, but they actually were. But the manipulation part here is that the reporter just says, oh, well, they're calling him the N-word. They're telling you that to put it into your brain. They are convincing you, oh, well, if they're calling on the N-word, the victim has to be black, duh! So it's one of the most disgusting pieces of, manipula of the media manipulation because they tell you something true, but choose the word choice so carefully that you're led to believe that the victim is black. Clothes are slashed and he is terrorized with a knife. His alleged captors repeatedly reference Donald Trump. And you hear that too? His captors repeatedly reference Donald Trump. Now, the actual words were, fuck Donald Trump. But the thing is, when he uses the words, his captors repeatedly reference Donald Trump. That is also a manipulation tactic. They're trying to convince the viewer that the mentioning of Donald Trump is just supporting Trump therefore giving you the impression that the attacker would be a racist white Trump supporter. They don't tell you that the victim is white, and they don't tell you that the references to Donald Trump were actually fuck Donald Trump. So there you go. That is the second piece of some of the worst media coverage and racism I have ever seen. And here's the third one. Of course, this was a full broadcast on CNN, but I'm just going to show you a clip. So, it's only seven seconds, so I'm just going to tell you what it was actually about. So, they were covering the uh, protests of Hillary and Trump back when they were going on, and at the end of uh, this one guest sentence, this bitch says the following. What do you say to the people who are who dragged a poor white guy out of a car and beat him? Oh my goodness, poor Trump. white people, please, oh my, stop. Poor white people. Now... I don't really need to do a full review on this statement. I already did when I actually made the video five years ago. But let me just ask you one common sense question, and I'll answer the question because I know that most people aren't smart enough to give me a real, proper, educated answer. But the question first. What would have happened if the roles were reversed and they said, oh my goodness, poor black people? The actual answer, the factual answer is there would be riots everywhere. But because she said poor white people, dead silence. Oh, and not just dead silence, but yeah, you're right. You know what? <laughs> poor them. Who fucking cares about them? But if it was a black person and she said, oh my goodness, poor black people. Oh, oh my God. You'd be seeing cities on fire. 
But anyway, those are the three worst examples that I could think of over the last five or six years of pure racist manipulation by the mainstream media. If you could think of more, I'd love to hear it. Granted, I've actually made videos on actually more than these three. I've made videos on like over 50 by this point, but these are the three worst. And I want to hear some of the other absolute worst you could think of. And when I say bad, they must be on like this level or even worse. Take care.